Right, we've had the Polaris now four months and she's had quite a few modifications done to her. She's not what you call stock anymore. We're going to start at the front and the first, the first obvious modification before you start changing anything else, wheels, tyres, the first mod you should always do is stick a winch on her. You've got to put a winch on. That's more important than anything else. Because even with the best tyres in the world you can get stuck with synthetic rope. My second mod was a two inch lift on the front and we also did a two inch lift on the back so that raised her, uh, like I say, two inches so that just give me that bit of extra ground clearance the other thing we changed We put the aluminum wheels on instead of the pressed steel and because this one's also road legal we've got a set of anchor tyres on her e, e rated so the road legal we've got a windscreen fitted all the seat covers on the roof but there's a canvas top rear window obviously the, with the canvas comes down to the bottom of the doors but the doors are actually aluminium skin doors on a proper nice frame And we've gone suicide doors because I'd much prefer this setup. It's a personal choice. I actually find it's a lot easier to climb in and out with the suicide doors than it is with doors that open here. There isn't really any mods to the dashboard other than removing the plastic screw, the plastic uh, clips from down there I do run with a dash cam in the windscreen I run with a dash cam in the windscreen in every vehicle I've got my wide angle mirror if you can have a mirror it's got to be the one on the inside We've obviously got a mirror on the right hand side which is passenger side on the razor because they're left hand drive. I do have a mirror on the other side as well. So them are quite a few mods. And then the, we've obviously put tow ball. which I feel you really do need because there's nowhere really to tie rope on the back of one of these if somebody's winching you out um, sometimes a tow ball can be quite handy when you're uh, towing one of your mates home who's broken down so it'll always get you out of the cack it's always handy it doesn't get in the way and then of course I've changed all the plastic clips every single one of them all the way round and there's even one hiding down here in the wheel arch on the back so they've all been changed same on the front 
I've taken the plastic clips out the front uh, clip that holds the headlights and the front grille on. Done all the bolts around the wheel arch. And again, there's one hiding down there. And that's got rid of all the little fiddly little plastic buttons that always I find break. So that's just a, the mods up to date really. There's probably more to come in the future. I think the next thing to hit it with is a set of really good quality shocks with more adjustments on them. Maybe go piggyback. But I think that's a bit further down the line yet. I am considering a clutch upgrade and I'm going to go 27 inch tyres so I, I just feel I need a little bit more ground clearance than these anchors give me but I'll be honest with you I've never got stuck with these they just get on and do the job and they're a surprisingly good tyre they are beginning to wear now, as you can see. We're losing the, uh, the dimples in the middles now because it does a lot of tarmac. <sighs> An awful lot of tarmac work. But they're quite an aggressive tyre. They work really well in the mud. And they're actually very, very comfy on tarmac, so I can't knock them. They were a good choice of tyre. So there we are, winch with synthetic rope to its suspension lift, the alley wheels, the anchor tyres, the aluminium doors, the canvas top, the windscreen, the tow ball, and obviously binning all the uh, plastic tabs and the dual battery conversion putting a PC925 Odyssey in as the starter battery split charging system and using the original Polaris battery for now as the auxiliary which only, only is used on the winch at the moment I'm not going to put any light bars on it because I never take it out at night it's always used in the daytime and they to be honest we've upgraded the headlight bulbs as well to pure whites and they're actually they're usable when it starts going dark of an evening so all in all as a vehicle I'm very happy with her I've had no problems with her she's been very very reliable She's very, very good on the fuel. I can get a weekend green lane in. Probably do 140 miles before I'm even thinking about um, throwing any more fuel in her. Whenever I'm out, I always, and I've got to upgrade my jerry tins, I always carry 10 litres of fuel with me. I've only got it netted into the back at the moment and the tripod whilst we're out. Oh there is one other mod. It's under there in the air box. We've put a K&N air filter in there. Uh, the throttle response, the fuel economy are a lot better since fitting the K&N and I've checked it two or three times now after some really really wet muddy trails and nothing's got through it. I did have an issue with the original filter. Went through some really deep water and the water went in through the air intake and it soaked the original filter. Uh, we've done the water crossing again since with the K&N and she never missed a beat so yeah K&N's another good mod. Thank you and enjoy your 4x4ing.
happy trail riding, happy racing, happy green laning, happy whatever you're doing your 4x4.